We are on this part two of engaging the power of faith for fulfillment of prophecies. Engaging the power of faith for fulfillment of prophecies. Remember the prophetic focus for the month is whatever God can do, faith can make happen. Is there anything too hard for God? God will make unusual things happen in your life this month. As your faith in him comes alive, God will make unusual things happen. Now ask yourself, this situation I'm in, is it beyond God to turn it around? The answer is no. Do I believe in to turn it around? If the answer is yes, then you are set for a new day. Every unwanted situation of our life must give way this month. That's why like you heard in the announcement, Next Sunday is our enough is enough service. Whatever God can do, your faith and my faith can bring an end to it. Any unwanted thing, unwanted issues of our lives, our faith in God, with whom nothing is impossible, can bring an end to it. And next Sunday by that anointing, every burden on your shoulder, every yoke on anyone's neck shall be openly destroyed. Yeah. Engage in the power of faith for fulfillment of prophecies. We are very conversant with this. That whatever God declares only his hand can deliver because what he says according to his, his size his capacity his wisdom there is nothing he says that we can deliver without him his plan is beyond our capacity to make happen but when our faith comes alive is and is stretched forth to deliver it. Who had believed that report, let him expect to see the hand of God show forth in his life. Isaiah 53 and verse 1. How powerful are prophecies? Prophecies carry inbuilt power for fulfillment. How shall this thing be? Oh my, what I said carries the power to make it happen. The power of the Almighty shall overshadow thee. A prophetic word carries inbuilt power to make happen. Luke 1, 34 and 35. Mary, then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this thing be, since I knew no man? And the angel said, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the Almighty shall overshadow thee. Therefore, that holy thing which I born of thee shall be called the Son of God. What do you need to do, therefore? Now, verse 38. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me, according to their word. And the angel departed. And you find the meaning of that in Luke 1, 45. And blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance of those things which are told her from the Lord. So whatever God says carries the power required to deliver. It carries the power required to deliver. And when you, your faith and my faith comes alive, we tap into that power for delivery. We tap into that power for delivery. When that woman told him of Jesus, that man said, Virtue is gone out of me. It, she tapped into power by, his, by her faith, and that made her whole. So when our faith comes alive, we tap into the power that made what God says come to pass. Can I hear your amen? amen? Every prophetic word carries imbued power for fulfillment. It's because God speaks according to his capacity, not our limitations. 
this time tomorrow there shall be surplus of food on the seas of Samaria. What? That man said, look, even if God opens the windows of heaven, shall this thing be? Whatever God says carries enough power to make happen. Did it happen or not? Second Kings chapter 7, verse 1 and 2. And then verse 20. It came, and that gains here, that corner, never partook of it. Beware of being scornful of prophetic words. It can be costly, sir. It can be costly. I could, have, I could imagine that man saying, get off Bushman, what are you talking about? I'm in charge of food here. We have not imported anything. He said, tomorrow food will come. You think we are dogmas? <laughs> he said, you see, but your mouth will not taste it. They trampled him on the feet. Don't sit in the seat of discomfort. It can be most costly. Don't. Don't. We were subjects of mockeries in those days in Kaduna. We had bitter enemies among believers. They kept even stopping from coming into church. They stopped on the way. Go back, go back. It's the devil. Go back, go back. I mean physical. I mean train no here carapo. I'm a can train no gap. I don't know where they are. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. What if you say it's not God and it's God? Where do you find yourself? Has anyone contended with God and prosper? Are you kotia nota gratis? Study to be quiet. Face your own business. 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 We are going to enter 75 nations in one year. Sir, we never spent a dime from home. We never sent manpower from home, and yet we are there. I make a train you here. Please, please, whatever God declares, carries imbued power for delivery. Imbued power. Just stretch out your faith and tap into that power and it delivers. So when we were 68 in our camp meeting, God laid out seven prophetic pillars. They are all here today by the grace of God and growing in dimensions. Amen. Beware of casting aspersion on God and his word. It can be costly. It can be costly. He will build this place in one year. He did or not? You may not be able to tell how many people are paid for it dearly. They are paid for whatever thing they may have said. Or thought. Or scorned at. I don't know what they think about themselves. You know, arrogance, arrogance. One year, how? They think we're talking about what you can do. We are talking about what he said he will do yes, and is able to do and we do if we believe. Mm. Your fortune package is real. But if you let them scorn it, you have lost it. So don't stand in the cancer of the ungodly. Don't sit in the seat of discomfort. <laughs> don't walk in the way of sinners. Jealously guard your inheritance in Christ. Matthew 7, 6, it said, Give not that which is holy unto dogs, neither spread in your peer before the swine, lest they turn back and trap upon it and tear you. Come on now. So where you sit matters. What are they saying in your church today? I don't know what kind of church. How can you be going to that kind of place? And you sit down there. How about what? How? 
I've never sat one place, sir, where God is despised. February 19 will make it 55 years that I met Jesus. February, this February 19 will make it 55 years that Jesus saved my soul. And I can tell you, it's been a most gorgeous adventure. I've never kept a careless friend. In the precious name of Jesus, no one will sell off his birthright. All this socialization you are doing, it, it, sir. <laughs> if a man be a friend of the world, he will be an enemy of God. You better choose where you belong. You can't stand in the middle of the road. It's a risk. The traffic is heavy. <laughs> choose where you belong. The good is that the prophetic agenda concerning you in this great year shall not be lost. Amen. It speaks according to what you can do and not what he wants us to do. God speaks according to his integrity, not our unpredictability. He speaks according to his integrity. Man is so Unpredictable, unpredictable. Oh, God is ever full of integrity. Whatever He says today is there tomorrow, is there forever. His words are yea and amen in Him. Ever dependable, ever reliable, always there. So when He speaks, it's for what He wants to do and will do if we believe. God cannot lie. Titus 1, 2. It's impossible for him to lie. Hebrews 6, 15 to 18. And let God be true and not men liars. You can always count on what God says he will do. Because he can do it if you and I will believe him. Blessed is she that believe it. There shall be a performance of those things which the mouth of the Lord, with things which were told you from the Lord. If it's from the word of God, it is settled in heaven forever. Can I digress here a bit? We need to step up and come up with a prophetic perspective of scriptures it will set to us for life God's word is the most tested and proven prophetic resource bank most tested its words are purer than gold tested in fire seven times by God And what is it still working till now? What is it still working till now? It's still working till now. So behind everything of scripture is does saith the Lord. Does saith the Lord. Behind every statement of scriptures is does saith the Lord. Second Peter 1, numbers 19. We also have a more sure word of prophecy. We are unto you do well. As you take it so in the light that shines in darkness until the day dawn, the day star arise in your heart. For knowing this, that no prophecy of scriptures of any private interpretation, there is nothing in the world that's addressed to only one person. What I say to one, I say to all. Every prophetic scripture applies to whosoever believes. Applies to whosoever believes. Every prophetic scripture applies to whosoever believes. Whosoever believes applies to whosoever believes. Holy men speak as you are moved by the Holy Ghost. Marshall Ward. Marshall Ward. 
my greatest experiences in life till date are from prophetic scriptures. They are from prophetic scriptures. I've been redeemed as a prince and a king to reign on the earth. Royalty mentality engulfed me. And slavery has not found a place till now. I make a tea now. <laughs> God said, the Lord, you seek me first. The interest of my kingdom. And do that in righteousness. And all these brothers are dying together will be added to you. That formed the beginning of my life. It didn't come by somebody prophesying to me. It came from prophetic scriptures. My son, your future is in my plan, not in your plan. It came from prophetic scriptures. Not someone pointing a rod and prophesying on my head. No. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. My son, the harder you follow me, the higher you fly. Psalm 63 and verse 8. 1978. I've raised you up with me. I made you still with me in heavenly places. Through the mystery of salvation. I will rise there far above all the powers and powers. Hit me by prophetic scriptures. Prophetic scriptures are the most valid prophetic resource. The most valid. They are sworn valid. I vow to do this if you care to believe. This is what I will do and can do if you care to believe. Amen. Amen. Now come down here. The word said, you have not chosen me, I have chosen you. And I've ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. What God is saying is that, thus says the Lord, you are chosen and ordained to go bring forth fruit. And whatever you ask in my name is guaranteed. He said, thus said the Lord, but it is not, uh, I have a gift, I don't have a gift. It's whether you believe the prophetic word or not. Thus said the Lord, and the much of people is my honor. And it honors me, I will honor. Over to you. <laughs> Amen. Thus said the Lord, go forth and bring forth fruit, and make sure your fruit are by it, and then you enter into favor with me. They are prophetic words. I stepped into financial fortune from prophetic words. They told me 8 and 18. My son, my prophetic plan is not a promise. Stop crying. It has no respect for prayer. All this come and prosper me. It won't come. <laughs> you step into the covenant to commit him. Yes. <laughs> you can ask God when you meet him, when I ask him last, give me money. I caught a prophetic word 82. Not 22, not 82. Not 22. 82. You know 82 to this time? 42 years. It hasn't failed once. Hallelujah. Prophetic words are standard. They are so unvalid. So if you don't agree, don't agree on your cup of tea or cup of coffee, whichever one. You, you, you disagree, it's your trouble. You agree, it's your favor. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. It's, it has no respect for fasting. My God. It's a covenant. Until your part is played, I'm not committed. Direct. Prophetic scripture. Not that I fasted after 20 days. No, no, no. God spoke. Any fasting that does not break light is a problem. Yes. Amen. Amen. I said when you are fasting and you have no time in scriptures, no time in prayer, you are just dieting. It's dieting. And it's okay, it's okay. Because it will keep you fit. Praise God. It's okay. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. It's your turn. Please cultivate a prophetic perspective to the world. It's not a history book. It's not a poem. Seek out of the book of the law and read. 
none of this shall fail, there shall any want I may. For my mouth it has spoken, and my spirit it has gathered them. Isaiah 34, verse 16. So shall my word be that's gone forth out of my lips. Isaiah 55, verse 10 and 11. It shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please. It shall prosper in the way that I send it. So shall my word be. It shall not return to me void. It's prophetic. God's word is prophetic. If you can break my covenant of the day and of the night, and I should not be there at night in their season, then may also my covenant with my servant David be broken. It's unbreakable. Biblical covenants are unbreakable when you line up with the terms. Biblical covenants are unbreakable by any devil, by any policy. So, biblical prophecies are unbreakable. If you can break the covenant of God with the day and the night, then you can try it. What that means is that there will be no life. When there is no sunlight, there will be no plant life, no plant life, no animal life, no animal life, human existence is gone. Praise God. Amen. Isaiah, I mean, Jeremiah 33, um, verse 20 and 21. It is so interesting to come on this and, you know, we should move forward. It's a year of breaking forth. Amen. We need a strong prophetic perspective of scriptures to secure our glorious future. Now, you see, people that have that, they live in their future. They live what? In their future. They live because they are too sure of what God said. And they are too sure that they are aligning. So they are working the reality of their future. They are working what? The reality of their future. Somebody was concerned, one of us, a deaconess in church, that my teaching on prosperity, people are talking about me in town. You know, he said, please don't mention this again. He said, No, it's not true. I said, So why are you crying? So I got to church and I said, it was a service day. I said, one of you was crying, saying I should not say I should prosper again. I said, no, no, I'm not only going to prosper, I'll be the wealthiest. <laughs> I looked at where she was sitting, she laughed. <laughs> that, what did I go there to tell him for? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Am I the poorest today? Whatever you can boldly declare, you have not truly discovered. Whatever you cannot boldly declare, you have not truly discovered. Whatever you cannot boldly declare, you have not truly believed. I knew God can do anything. So when He said, This thing will be dedicated, it, I had from Him. I won't say that myself forever. But He has given me grace to develop capacity to believe for anything He says. Yes, sir. Over to you. No matter where you may be today, your fortune package is sure this year. Amen. And your turn around begins from this service. Amen. Your turn around begins from this service. Amen. Your turn around begins from this service. Amen. Somebody believe that. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Prophetic scriptures are real. You can see it in your church here. How real they are. Any prophetic word that has no root in scriptures. Uh, Watch it. So it's not enough to locate prophetic scripture, but we should give ourselves fully to our part of the deal. Prophetic scriptures are covenants that God is enacting with his people. So all we need to do is to get to know our part and commit to our part. For instance, sir, listen. <laughs> God's fortune agenda has one fundamental requirement. It's Psalm 102 that we all know, verse 13 to 15. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion, for the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. For thy servants take at pleasure in the stones of Zion, and favor the dust thereof. Therefore, the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth thy glory. My God. Taking pleasure in the matters of the kingdom is the covenant qualifier for access to the realm of fearful favor. Fearful favor. 
which we qualify as fortune. Fearful favor has a foundation in our conscious, deliberate, intentional commitment to kingdom matters. Amen. Amen. Taking pleasure. You are not under pressure. You are taking pleasure in the matters of the kingdom. And then that triggers access to the realm of fearful favor, which you call fortune. Fearful favor, which you call fortune. My wife and I had a quite a number of experiences. We we'll get to the airport in those days, and then uh, whether at home or abroad, we don't have a first-class you know, ticket. Or is it ticket they call it? Ticket, okay. <laughs> and then, please come on, first class. We don't have the please come on, sir. You know I don't wear color. <laughs> you don't have to be clerical, just be normal, be a Christian. We were somewhere in New York, we were connecting our flight, and then this white lady, we got to the launch, he said, please come into the first class launch. I said, no, we don't have first class. He said, please come in. Come in. I said, you don't believe I have the money to fly first class. I just don't want to fly. <laughs> Favor. I got to a meeting, somebody met me, said, I'm just here to serve you, sir. I said, from where? from Canada. And he carried the bag. <laughs> and I was wondering. So I just got somebody to serve me here without any plan for it. You are going to hit favor. Amen. Take pleasure in the matters of the kingdom if you launch into the realm of fearful favor, Amen. which you call fortune. Amen. Don't sit down there waiting. Up. Fortune doesn't drop. When you meet the demands, it begins to manifest itself. It's your year. Yes. It's your year. Yes. It's your year. Yes. You are a house provider for WSM. Take pleasure. Don't say they are coming again. They are coming. I've just washed the carpet. They are coming. And they won't even care. They just enter like that. <laughs> they are coming. <laughs> you are a minister, and it's almost time. Oh my God. If I were not a minister now, I, I know where I should be. There's a friend of mine in Shumuru I needed to meet at this time. And say, serious business matter. Now, if you don't go now, they say you don't love God. So, now, at that point, don't go. Because your going has no benefit. Take pleasure, my friend. Yes, take sir. Pleasure. Take pleasure in the things of the kingdom. They say, it's time to believe God for at least one soul before the month is over. For what? Don't do it. Please. <laughs> there is nothing God says to his benefit. It's all to your benefit and my benefit. In the precious name of Jesus, the year will be with a difference. Yes. There is someone here, your own one solid soul, minimum, is here this month. Yes. There are some greedy folks, like some of us are, who will bring 10. Yes. By reason of their delight, delight. They delight in doing it. They are not being forced to do it. It's, their, it's in them. Somebody's story is changing. Amen. We are all getting on prophetic wings this year. Amen. Swearing to heights beyond our imagination. Amen. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Amen. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Amen. What a great day. What a great day. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So we cannot wait to see prophecies fulfilled. We must put our faith on the line to seek fulfillment of prophecies. We must get committed to our part of it to see it happen. We serve a covenant keeping God, not a Father Christmas God. There is nothing he says we will do 
that will ever happen without doing what he says you should do first. Why are you calling me Lord, Lord, without doing what I tell you to do? You are wasting your time. Do what I tell you to do first. And watch I manifest myself to you. Whosoever has my, my commandments and keeps it is the one that loves me. You love me, you love my father, and I will love you. And I will manifest myself to you. You keep my commandment and watch me manifest in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As we close this morning, the word says in Psalm 35, verse 27, let them shout for joy. Their favor is righteous cause. Their favor, my righteous cause. Let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified that takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Favor my agenda. I will take pleasure in your all and well being. Favor my agenda. You never miss your place or miss your step in destiny. Favor my agenda. <laughs> and watch how I will decorate you. We close at this point by pointing to three things that. We validate how much we take delight and pleasure in the matters of the kingdom. Engagement in kingdom advancement prayers. When you pray, say, Our Father, which is in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. That's a pregnant statement. This gospel of the kingdom shall appear among all nations, and then shall the end come. <laughs> Matthew 24, verse 14. You are saying, Lord, let your word go forth, bring about salvation of multitudes into your kingdom. You are saying, Lord, bring out people that are in the dungeon of darkness into the kingdom of light. You are saying, God, save the lost and establish them in your kingdom. Thy kingdom come is all about kingdom matters. It is God's priority for every believer's prayer life. That's God's priority for our prayer life. The reason why things don't happen is that we have left the foundation and we are building on no foundation so others don't walk. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. And what does that mean? He wants all men saved and come to the knowledge of the truth as made available in church. Thy will be done. If you will, you can make me whole. I will be the whole. His will is for us to be healed and stay healthy. I wish above all things that thou may prosper and be healthy, even as I so prosper. But they can't overcome the issues of the world until they are born again. So I say, oh Lord, save them and deal with the issue of their life that is killing them. Can I hear your amen? amen. Show me any genuine kingdom addict. I'll show you a star in the making. You may not know it now, but it's on the way coming. <laughs> show me a genuine kingdom advancement addict. That's another star in the making. Seek you first the interest of my kingdom in righteousness you are not faking it you are not an hypocrite and all these things shall be added to you without you needing to ask of them it's the same chapter Matthew 6 6 to 9 and then I mean, uh, uh, 6 and 9 to 10 and then 17 to 18 God who sees your prayer investment in secret. 
your fasting investment in secret will reward you openly. That shall be humbling open rewards this year. Amen. Somebody that the husband, the wife was giving pocket money, you know the meaning, and trekking like a madman those long distances and got a multinational job as a manager. Mamumi Amuni Aprodianosa. People suffer because they don't know what to do about their situation. Two weeks. Two weeks of intensive engagement. Two weeks. How many weeks? Two weeks. Two weeks of intensive engagement. Two weeks only. And God showed up. God will show up for you this year. Yeah. Beyond your widest imagination. Yeah. He will show up for you this year. Yeah. Beyond your widest imagination. Yeah. What are we praying? Praying for souls to be saved, to be established in the faith. Praying for the word of God to keep flowing, going forth from the altar. Praying for God's people to be healed and set free from all captivities. Pray without ceasing. It's always enough to pray for. Thank you, Jesus. Number two is so winning in divorce. And it's every believer's responsibility. Every new creature has a ministry of reconciliation. Reconciling the world back to God. If you read that from chapter 5 of 2 Corinthians, verse 17. Now we are ambassadors for Christ by reconciling the world back to God. So it's every believer's response. It's not a gift. <laughs> it's not a gift. It's our responsibility. And what comes out of that, among other things, is you stay healthy, healthy, healthy. A faithful ambassador is health. Not only that, you get enthroned by God in the process. He that winner souls is wise. And by wisdom, kings reign and princes decree justice. Proverbs 11 30, Proverbs 8, and verse 15 and 16. <laughs> Not only that, you commit to it, it eradicates shame and reproach from our lives. Shame and reproach from our lives. In John 15, verse 8. In this, my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. Proverbs 14, 28. In the multiple people is the king's honor. And 1 Samuel 2, 30. He that honors me, I will honor. As the Lord lives, every trace of shame and reproach on anyone's life in our camp must clear off this year. <laughs> so between now and the end of the first half of the year, you become a surprise to yourself. <laughs> Every subject of mockery around anyone's life shall be turned to a testimony of envy. <laughs> shall be turned to a testimony of envy. <laughs> you believe that? Let me hear your loudest, amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. And number three way for this morning as we close is the care covenant. Kingdom care covenant. As you have opportunity, do good to all men, especially they of the household of faith. Do good to all men. He that giveth to the needy lends unto the Lord. Proverbs 19, 17, and that which has given shall be given again back unto him. Proverbs 28, verse 27, he that giveth to the poor shall not lack, 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 shall not lack. So share with someone this year. Share with a needy, a challenged brother or sister or family in your cell, in your zone, in your service groups, 
as members of the church, in your neighborhood. Put smile on someone's face. You never lose your smiles. <laughs> Inject joy into someone's life, and joy and rejoicing becomes your portion. Amen. For whatever good thing any man does, the same shall receive from the Lord. The same shall receive from the Lord. There's, now, no one in your lineage shall ever be a beggar. Amen. No one shall live with rags. Amen. No one will look for where to lay his head. Start from where you are. Stop consuming all that you have. That's about the future. You don't remove the seed from the bread. You don't have a harvest tomorrow. Follow them that teach you the word of God. See the kind of result they command. And follow suit. Hebrews 13 and verse 7. The secret of men are in their, in their stories. The secret of men are in their stories. So check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Be part of putting a smile on someone's face. You find God manifesting himself to you day and night. What a great time in God's presence. In the name of Jesus, is your year. Amen. Your fortune package shall not be lost to spiritual carelessness. Amen. Everyone will sing a new song this year. Amen. I said you will sing your new song this year. Amen. Your song of triumph will come for this year. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lift up your right hand to heaven. And give God thanks. Give God thanks. Give him praise. In Jesus precious name we've given thanks. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen. Amen. Now we have some individuals here among us this morning that Jesus brought. Maybe it's not your first time, maybe not your second time. But you know that you know you have not experienced a new birth as an individual. You have had it but you are yet to lay hold on it. You want to say, Jesus, save my soul this morning. Forgive my sins this morning. I want to become a member of your household, a member of your family. I want to become a child of God. Wherever you are this morning, I would like to pray with you. For those online around the world, you want to surrender your life to Christ, what an opportunity that you have. For every such individual, please stand to your feet. Jesus, save my soul this morning. Forgive my sins this morning. Please stand to your feet. Make me a new creature this morning. Do a new thing in my life this morning, Jesus. God bless you many more. I'm standing up wherever you are. Get up on your feet. I'm praying for you right there. I'm praying for you right there. Please stand. Stand to your feet. Jesus is Lord. There are also people here this morning that need to rededicate their life to Jesus. You need to rededicate your life to Jesus. Wherever you are, please stand up also. I pray with you at the same time. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus, please stand. Please stand. Please stand. Amen. Now, all of us who are standing both for the first and second call, please bow your heads for prayers. And lift up your right hand to go, I mean to heaven right now. Lift up your right hand. And pray this prayer of faith after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it loud, Lord Jesus. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day, you rose again to set me free. Today, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe my sins are now forgiven. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for
for restoring me back to the faith. By your grace, I shall serve you all the days of my life. Amen. Now, be blessed. Keep your hands up. And I cover each of you with the blood of Jesus. Remain covered against all satanic assaults in the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. Grace to run the race to the end. Receive it right now. Grace never to turn back again. Receive it right now. And I pray for grace to make it true to heaven at the end of your journey. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Sin shall no more have dominion over your life. You are free at last. And you are free forever. In Jesus' precious name. Congratulations. Congratulations. Please get seated. And fill out the slip given to you. And pass them on to those church officials around where you are. Again, welcome to the kingdom of light. Darkness shall not have an arrow to your life anymore. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now, today is a covenant day of settlement. And in the name of Jesus, as we partake of the flesh and of the blood of Jesus, everyone's eyes will be opened. Amen. To see how this simple covenant of settlement works in the name of Jesus. Amen. Very simple. There was a time when everything went bizarre for a whole nation. There was no peace to him that went out or to him that came in. But great vexation was upon all the inhabitants of the earth. Then the word of the Lord came. And Asa took courage, the king, and led the people into a covenant that gave them rest, ran about. Simple. Second Chronicles 15, verse 12. The Bible says, And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart, and with all their soul. That whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. And they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice, and with shoutings, and with trumpets, and with cornets. And all Judah rejoice at the oath. Listen. For they are sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire. We need to get to that point. Their whole desire. And he was fond of them. And the Lord gave them what? Rest. With their whole desire. Do you have any kingdom dream for the year? With their whole desire. You love the Lord with all your soul, with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. With the whole of your desire. You have so many things you are looking forward to, but is there God in it? Is there any space for God? And God gave them what? Rest. Run about. And with their whole desire, with their whole desire, with their whole desire. What do you desire to render unto your God this year? You, me. <laughs> With their whole desire. What kingdom desires do you really have? And the Lord gave them rest. Run about. It's not about seeking God for what you will get, but pursuing after God for who he is and for your affection for him. And with their whole desire. I found a man with a heart for me. Watch how we decorate him. With their whole desire. That's mo most of the time missing. They enter the covenant to serve God. That's okay. But with their whole desire. With all their heart. Their spirit man is connected. And their whole desire. Their mind. They thank God. They dream God. They dream kingdom dreams. 
I said, Jesus, if you ever bless me, I want to be part of building you churches. I didn't have a bank account when I said so. Their whole desire. Dream a kingdom dream. He's doing it? Yes, sir. With their whole desire. If I have this money, nobody will beg me, nobody will appeal to me to give it. But that now that we're all at the same level, understand what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm sold out to God with their whole desires. You enter into that rest realm with a desire, a kingdom center desire. What is your kingdom center desire? That's what the time is whether you enter into that rest or not. Lord, I want to see ten souls established in your kingdom and in this church between now and the end of June. Help me, Jesus. This is the desire of my heart. And it begins to decorate you with what you don't even know you need. With what you don't even know you need. With their whole desire. 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 You are breaking forth. Amen. That is the mystery behind entering into that realm of settlement. You have struggled enough. It's your turn to be settled. Amen. And God is settling you this time. Amen. So keep building on your kingdom dreams. Let it be real to you. Let it be the motivation of your life. And you'll be glad you did. Can I hear your amen? amen. The things that were written and four times were examples were upon whom the end of the age has come. People are struggling all over the world today, but come with me and enter into your era of settlement. All and settlement. All and settlement. All and settlement. For the young lions may suffer want and hunger, but they that see the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come to the realm of settlement by having a genuine desire. Kingdom center desire. Kingdom advancement desires. Kingdom enlargement desires. Kingdom investment desires. Come on now. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Kingdom investment, investment of time. You are not cringing, looking for someone who is challenged to bail him out. You are not struggling. It's, it's inside you. You are delighted in doing it. Investment of your time, your energy, and your resources in advancing his kingdom as a delightful desire, delightful desire of your soul. It brings a man into an era of rest. It's your turn. It's your turn. Amen. It's your turn. 